Christ. But some said, Shall Christ come out of Galilee? Hath not the Scripture said that Christ cometh out, uh, cometh of the seed of David and out of the town of Bethlehem where David was? Uh, so there was a division among the people because of him. And some of them would have taken him, but no man laid hands on him. Then came the officers to the chief priests and Pharisees, and they said to him, Why have ye not brought him? The officers answered, Never man spake like this man. Then answered them, uh, the Pharisees, Are ye also deceived? Have any of the rulers or the Pharisees believed on him? But this people who knoweth not the law are cursed. Nicodemus saith unto them, He that came to Jesus by night being one of them, Doth our law judge any man before it hear it, and know what he doeth? They answered and said to him, Thou art also of Galilee, art thou also of Galilee? Search and look, for out of Galilee ariseth no prophet. And every man uh, went to his own house. And that's why all I'm going to read tonight, that's reading more than I can ever preach out. Uh, but I got to thinking about this and thinking about the scripture. One verse all I want to preach uh, tonight, but I wanted to read all of that so we could see where we're at. Uh, verse number 46, where I, I, I've been praying and studying and thinking on all day, can't get it off my mind. Uh, the Bible said the officers answered, uh, never man spake like this man. And I, I thought about that as I was uh, praying today and studying. I thought about down through the pages of time uh, how we've had great speakers, great orators as they call it, uh, uh, could get up and they could speak to a crowd, they could move a crowd. Uh, even Adolf Hitler uh, was a great speaker. He was a great orator. He, he, he deceived uh, uh, millions and uh, deceived mul uh, multitudes in his speaking, but yet he was a great speaker. You can go all down through history and find others that, uh, the same way, but they were speaking uh, words of, of flesh. They were speaking carnal words or, or words of hate, if you would. But I, I got to thinking about this. No matter how many uh, great speakers we've had in our time, you take Billy Graham uh, was a great speaker. He could get up and, and speak and people would move to what he said. But uh, the Bible said never man uh, speak like this man. I don't care who they are. Uh, they can't speak the words of the Lord. And I, I, I like the word of the Lord. And I'll tell you what, I thought about this. I preached last night and come across this. Uh, brother, the Bible said that in John chapter 6 and verse 66, uh, many of them had turned and went away from it. And they went on back and he came to the disciples and he said, Will you go also? And Peter said, To whom uh, shall we go? Because thou hast the words of eternal life. And I'll tell you, a never man has spoke like this. I've heard uh, great preachers and I, I felt the power of God in their preaching. Uh, but they can't speak like the man I'm preaching about tonight. Uh, this man Jesus. Uh, brother, I'll tell you, his words are life tonight and we need to uh, take those words and apply them to our heart, apply them to our life. And God bless us if we'll do that. And I thought about what was going on here. Uh, they, the officers were talking to the Pharisee and the scribes and they asked the officer, and I'm just using my words tonight, uh, why have you not brought him to it? Uh, why have you not brought him before us? They said, never man speak like this man. I got to thinking about that today and studying on that. Uh, but and I'll tell you that up until that time, and even now, nobody's ever spoke like that. Uh, you begin to study his words and, and what he said. Brother, I'll tell you, uh, this man, Jesus, he spoke pure love. He spoke love to his people. I'm glad he did. I, I'm glad that he spoke love. He said one time, uh, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, uh, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, uh, but have everlasting life. Uh, not only did he speak love, but uh, brother, he lived love today. I'm so thankful of that. Uh, Paul put it like this. He said, but God uh, committed his love to us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for it. I'll tell you what kind of uh, they sang an old song. What wondrous love is this? But uh, we've never experienced love uh, like that unless it comes 
uh, from our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ. Uh, brother, nobody ever has. I thought about this today. I thought about men have set up false prophets and they uh, set up false teachers and they uh, even set up false deities and false uh, gods throughout uh, history and throughout time. Uh, but brother, I'll tell you what, they didn't speak the love and they didn't speak the words that our Savior spoke today. I thought about how they set up Buddha, how they set up all, and they set up these different uh, things that they worship in this world. But uh, none of them speaks life, and uh, none of them speaks love today. As uh, a matter of fact, if you look into their religion, and you look into it, brother, they, uh, they breathe hate, and they speak hate unto this world. Brother, I'm glad today that God loved me when I was unlovable. I'm glad that while I was a yet sinner, a yet a sinner way that God uh, loved me. And I'll tell you, uh, that's what got this old boy on an old-fashioned altar. Uh, brother, I guess I was scared to death of the devil's hell. Uh, but I'm glad there was somebody that showed me the love of God. Brother, it takes the love of God. Amen. We look across our land and country today and there's hate on every corner. There's hate. Every group's breathing hate. Every, uh, you, and I'm just going to preach this tonight. You've got the uh, the blacks breathing hate to the whites. The whites breathing uh, hate to the blacks. I'm going to tell you, I don't care if you're red, white, yellow, black, or green. Uh, brother, God loves you today. He said, for I'm not in Paul said one, uh, Romans 1, 16, for I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. It is a part of God's salvation every one that believe it, uh, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Uh, when he said that, uh, uh, brother, he put us all on level ground uh, before God. His love, uh, he came to uh, uh, die for each and every man, woman, boy, or girl uh, that's ever been born. Amen. I'm so thankful of that. I preached not long ago. And I thought I come across that sort of that way that, that I just said about the colors and all that. I'll tell you, I used to be a prejudiced man. I, I Before I got right with God, I hated a black man. I hated a brown man. I hated a yellow man. And I, I would actually say, if it ain't white, it ain't right. But I'll tell you, that's of the devil. Uh, that, amen today. That's hate today. And I never will forget when I, uh, after I got saved, the preacher asked me. He had his arm around me and he said, uh, how do you know you've been saved? How do you know you've been saved? And I told you I take tears just rolling down my feet. And I didn't know what else to say. I just know that I've been changed. I know remember, all that hate that was in my heart I was gone. And I looked at him and I said, Preacher, I love everybody. Amen hey, today. That's the kind of love that our Savior gives today. But never a man spake like that man. I thought about Preacher Bill Ball today. Up when I was working for him, I was just about... Uh, 16, 17 years old and we was on a job site. I'd been out all night the night before uh, doing things I shouldn't have done. And it come dinner time and we were uh, sitting up on the bank and we was eating. Uh, and he looked at me and he, uh, if anybody uh, could have looked down on me, if anybody uh, could have said something or judged me at that time, he could. Uh, I worked for it. He was paying my uh, salary. He could have said something to me. He put his arm around me and he said, Rocky, I love you. And God loves you. And God wants good things for you. And I'll tell you what, that pricked my heart. And that showed me that somebody loved me. And brother, I'll tell you, it was, and he was showing me God's love. And it brought me to an altar. Yeah. I'll tell you what, then, preacher James Sutton, one night I know you have heard the story. I don't know if you know him or not, John. Uh, Wayne, he's just a little short preacher. He won't weigh probably 120 pounds soaking wet. He got up one night preaching in a revival. He was preaching on Romans 10, 8, 9, and 10 about how to be saved. And I'll tell you, that man looked like he was 10 foot tall. He looked like his finger was that long. And God showed me His love. He showed me that I didn't have to go to that place called hell. He showed me that He loved me regardless. It didn't matter what I did last night. It didn't matter of what I'd done two weeks ago or ten years ago. He loved me. And He came that I could be saved for it. And brother, I'll tell you, He worked a work in my life. Uh, he spoke to my heart uh, like no man had ever spoke to me. Uh, brother, that's what He'll do. He not only uh, speaks to us through this precious Word tonight, 
but he speaks to our heart. I like that old song we sang sometimes. He whispers sweet peace to me. Amen. Brother, I'll tell you that blesses my heart. Uh, that the creator of this universe, uh, the God of all gods, uh, the King of kings, the Lord of lords, uh, speaks to this little country boy a uh, heart and he'll whisper sweet peace to him. Amen. He'll show me his love. Never man. They said never man spake like this man. I sort of picture him. Well, we don't know what to do with him. Uh, nobody's ever talked to us like that. We can even read back uh, when he was just a child in the temple, brother. Uh, and he was teaching them. And brother, it amazed them at the knowledge and the wisdom uh, that this man Jesus had. Uh, brother, never man spake like this man. I thought, brother, uh, there's never been a man uh, that spoke with such compassion as he had. Uh, brother, I'll tell you, we've got to, but we're lacking a compassion down in God's house anymore. Amen today. And I thought about this old woman in the Bible. The Bible said that she was caught in the very act of adultery. But that didn't mean that it was rumored that she was shacking up. That don't mean that she was, that people were talking that she was just meeting somebody here and there. That she was caught in the very act of adultery. Brother, in other words, I'll just be plain tonight. They caught her in bed with somebody that wasn't her husband. That's what that means tonight. Brother, they brought her out. Uh, they brought her to Jesus and they began to uh, talk to him. They said, Now the law says uh, that Lord, we're to stone her. Uh, we caught her in the very act. We're uh, supposed to bring her out here and to stone her. What do you say that we do to her? Uh, you know what Jesus did? He had compassion. Amen. He knelt down and he began to ride on the ground uh, with his finger. And they began to uh, they began to ask him. And he said, Now, he that's without sin, let him cast the first stone. He knelt back down and begin to ride on the ground again. And brother, I'll tell you what, they begin to walk away. Uh, each one of them walked away. He looked up there in just a minute and he said, woman, uh, where are those side accusers at? And she said, I have none, Lord, but thee. And I'll tell you, this is compassion, Wayne. Uh, this is the compassion he had for Rocky Ball. Uh, this is the compassion he had for each and every one of us. And the sweetest words I've ever heard in my life. He said, neither uh, do I condemn thee? Let go and sin no more. But the only one that had a right to condemn her, but the only one that could have. My brother said, Neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. I'm so thankful tonight that God, our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ, has shown me compassion. I thought back. The scripture said he had the multitude follow him. Said he looked across him and he had compassion on the multitude. Where's our compassion at tonight, church? Amen. I, I've been guilty of that myself. Not showing it, not showing it when I should. You so somebody say, preacher, that ain't hardly wrong then, just not showing a little bit of compassion. I'll tell you James said if a man knows to do good with it, not him to sin. Right. So it is. We ought to give be compassion every opportunity we have. I think so many times about first Corinthians. Uh, chapter 13. We call it the love chapter. And I'll tell you what. You read that chapter and if you can't find love and compassion in there, something's wrong. I'm not going to read it tonight. I'm going to quote it. But if you read read that chapter, the whole chapter, and you'll find love and you'll find compassion. We'll find how that we're supposed to apply it to our life. I can get up here and preach to you though I'm blue in the face. I, I, and Wayne can get up here and preach so he's blue in the face. But I'll tell you, if we don't do it in love, if we don't have compassion in it, it's not going to do you any good. It's not going to do me any good. And it's certainly not going to do a lost and dying world any good tonight. But I'm thankful tonight that the Lord uh, gives us love. And I'm thankful tonight that He gives us compassion. And I thought, brother, I, over in the Scripture, I believe it's in Matthew, as he was teaching them there. Uh, brother, this is a, this man Jesus. Uh, they ain't never heard anybody talk like this. Uh, you think about the parables that he gave. Uh, you think about the examples that he gave. Uh, you talk about how he preached and how he taught with the uh, power of God and with the authority. They never uh, had anybody to speak with that kind of authority. Uh, brother, it blows their minds that he did. But I'm going to tell you something. He's a God of love. He's a God of compassion. He's a God of mercy. But there's coming a time, my friend, that, brother, that condemnation is going to fall. Amen. 
Our world don't like to hear this anymore, but there's coming a time. Brother, I, I thought about this several times this week. There's going to be many on the day of all days. They're going to stand before the Lord and they're going to say, Lord, Lord, I've cast out devils in thy name. I've prophesied in thy name. I've done many wonderful works in thy name. And in other words, there'll, there'll be some stand there and they'll say, Lord, I, I've got a, I've been a deacon. Lord, I've been a teacher. Lord, I've been a singer. Lord, I've been a preacher. Lord, I've done this. I've done that. I've helped people. I've tried to be a compassionate to people. I've tried to be good to people. He's going to look at it. And I'll tell you what, this right here is the saddest words I think I've ever heard. He's going to look at them and he's going to say, Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I never knew you. And I, I think about that scripture. I read that scripture and I think about a man. Uh, he lived up in Cosby and he was a good man. As far as a good moral man, I, I'll tell you, he lived as good as anybody uh, that you'd know. But uh, somebody hungry, he'd go buy him groceries. Somebody, a uh, house had burnt down, he'd go try to buy material. He'd buy nail. He'd buy lumber. He'd buy things to try to help him. Uh, if he found out a kid didn't have nothing for Christmas, he'd be going and buying him Christmas. He was just uh, a charitable pe a fella that tried to help in the community. And everybody looked at him like he was just going to fly away in, any, any day now. Like he had a dream one night uh, that he was climbing a ladder that went from earth to heaven. And uh, brother, every time that he bought a food, every time he bought some kid Christmas, every time uh, that he bought a nail or bought a uh, two before, he'd climb up a little higher on that ladder. Uh, brother, but when he got to the very top step, and he said in that dream he started to uh, step off over into glory land, uh, that ladder fell back and uh, all the way back down to earth. Uh, brother, I'll tell you, it don't matter how good we are. It don't matter how compassionate we are. If we don't have the Son of God, Amen. if we've not been washed in the blood of the Lamb, Amen. I'm a firm believer that, that we're saved unto a work. We're not saved by works. We've got so many people today, Vernon's got that all backwards. They think I'll do good. I'm going to tell you that do gooders. I ain't going to get there. I, I've said this a, a thousand times, I guess. Hell is full right now of good old boys and good old girls. When we stand before the Lord, there's not going to be a calling for good old boys and good old girls. Hey, he's not looking uh, for good old boys. He's not looking for good moral people. He's not looking uh, for church members. He's not looking uh, for where you rank in society. He's not looking at your bank account. He's not looking uh, for things like that, brother. But I'll tell you, he's looking uh, for the blood of the Lamb of God uh, that was slain uh, for each and every one of us, brother. That's what's going to matter on that day. I'll tell you, never man spake like this. And I'm not preaching to you nothing tonight that Jesus didn't preach. And he said, I like that. Peter said, To whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life. No man speaks like this man. And I thought about today when he speaks. I'm glad he spoke to me. I'm glad when he spoke to me, he called me my name. I'm glad when he uh, called me to, uh, to be saved, I'm glad that he called me by my name. I, I touched on that just a little bit over here a few weeks ago, I guess. But when Saul was on the road to Damascus, and that great light shined about him, uh, he heard the voice from heaven uh, saying, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And he said, it's hard for thee to kick against the pricks. And, it, and he said, who is this Lord? He said, it's Jesus whom thou persecutest. It's hard uh, for thee to kick against the pricks. He called him by name. I thought about Lazarus, how that uh, when he was laying in the grave four days, he called him by name. Lazarus uh, come forth. Uh, and brother, out of the grave he came. Uh, I thought about Zacchaeus as he went up the tree he called him by name Zacchaeus uh, come down I'm going to your house I'm going to home with you today and brother I'm thankful that he called me by name and I'll tell you he'll call you by name too whether you believe it or not he knows who you are he knows each and every one of them and I thought how so many times I've heard that voice He'll call you out of sin, too. Amen. I believe that with all my heart. I believe He'll call you and He'll call you. 
And he'll give you opportunity after opportunity. I thought about David. We know that story. David had got out and he had sinned and he had tried to cover up sin and tried to cover that sin up, just kept on and on. And that's just like telling a lie. When you tell one lie, you've got to tell another one to cover it up. And you've got to tell another one to uh, kind of prop that one up. And sooner or later, it's all going to fall. And that's what David was doing. He was trying to cover up and trying to hide. Uh, sleep it, uh, sweep it under the rug. Uh, but brother, I'll tell you what, God sent a man of God down there to him. Uh, sent Nathan down there to him to, to, to preach to him a little bit. And he said, David, uh, thou art the man. You're the very one. And then we read that prayer. Uh, then he prayed in Psalms 51. He said, Lord, I'm restoring to me the joy of thy salvation. Now, brother, he called him out of it tonight. And I thought about my life. There's been many a times, every time that I've ever failed, and every time I've ever faltered, and I've ever come short, there's a still small voice that starts speaking to my heart. And I'll tell you what, I've had people tell me, I'm fixing the clothes. The Lord will help me. But I've got wrong in my life, and I've had people to come to me and tell me, Rocky, you are not doing that. And it'll go in this ear and out the other ear. I've had people to try to sit down and help me. And sometimes it's made me mad in the morning. And sometimes it, it just, uh, sometimes I'll, I'll sit and listen to them or whatever. But I'll tell you what, when that still small voice, when this man that never spake like this before begins to deal with your heart, begins to speak to your heart, it'll make a difference. It'll make you sit up and pay attention. Now, amen today. And I'll tell you what, I had to, uh, Sunday morning, I may have told it over here Sunday night, but Sunday morning we had uh, four people get right with the Lord at church. And I, two of them people, uh, they, the, two of them had already been saved. I know for they said for a fact that I'll tell you what, what both of them said, if we had to come this morning, they had to talk to one another. I uh, said, the Lord told me if I could get things right, uh, today, I, today would be the very day uh, that I'd die. Uh, he'd take me out of here. Brother, I'll tell you, uh, that still small voice that he sends will wake you up. It'll show you right where you're at. You say, preacher, how you know it will? Well, it has me. It has me. Never a man spake like this man has. I'll tell you what, I've heard some wonderful men of God. I've heard good speakers. I've heard I've had good teachers in my life that could stand in front of thousands and just keep their attention and just just good speakers. I'll be in to get my attention like our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Everybody's saying tonight, I've done my best for the Lord. <clears throat>